Airstream Journey 3, A Trip to Mom's. I had not seen my mother for about a year and a half. This would be our third trip that we would take in our Airstream. I grew up in Erie, PA. It's right on Lake Erie, and my mother lives east of there in the heart of what I call grape country. Along the lake for 100 miles or so, there's pretty much nothing but vineyards in the area. And where I grew up, they grow Concord grapes. If you've ever had Welch's grape jelly, it probably came from around there. I think when some of the Europeans came over and settled Pennsylvania in the early days, they realized that along the lake shore, the temperatures were moderated by the warmth of the water. It's much like California in that respect and I'm sure you could find some other places in Europe that have similar conditions to grow. In the fall, when the grapes are ready to harvest, you can smell them in the air wherever you go. It's not really a smell that you can describe, like most smells are not, but when you smell it, you really can't ever forget it. When you live somewhere, the sights and smells are eventually taken for granted. You grow so used to seeing and smelling the same things around, you pretty much stop seeing and smelling the things around you. That sounds kind of crazy and I, and kind of sad, but the fact of the matter is, I think it's very true. It isn't until you are gone, and maybe never able to return, you suddenly remember those pieces that are missing from your life. Every microscopic piece that you once took for granted I think we're all guilty of that, and I think that there's that expression, there's no place like home, and it's very true. We purchased our Airstream at the beginning of September. We thought it would be best if we got out there before the snow started to fall. Erie gets a lot of snow, somewhere between 100 and 150 inches a year. I don't remember there being a time when winter didn't have a lot of snow, and quite frankly, I thought everybody had a lot of snow. In the realm of snow, the southern shore of Lake Erie gets hammered by lake effect snows every single year. This would be the third trip in the Airstream, and it was perfect. It's always so nice to be able to just stop whenever you want to eat at your table, lie in your bed, or use your own private bathroom. I think when I told my mother we were bringing the Airstream, she thought that was probably a little odd since she has a very large old farmhouse that has plenty of room for plenty of people. I like the privacy of our Airstream, and we miss nothing in parking in the driveway. The driveway is sheltered by a big oak tree on the left of it, and even in the driveway we felt like we were camping with all the leaves and shade around us. It usually takes about 10 hours to get there. It's a long, boring drive. It's not quite as boring as driving through Nebraska, but I don't think it's very far away from that level of profound boredom. The other reason we wanted to take the Airstream was because of our dog, Augie. To keep from buying a totally new truck, I removed the center console on mine so Augie could have a bed between us. He loves to travel, and I'm not sure why. He doesn't really do anything. I think at the end of the day, his life just revolves around us, and to be quite honest, our lives revolve around him too. He doesn't even stand up very often between those seats. He just kind of lays down and usually one of us has their hand on him. And I think in his world, it just doesn't get any better. We really couldn't ask for a better traveler than he is. My mother loves dogs. But when you visit someone and bring your dog, it can be an adjustment for them and for the person you're visiting. So in that regard, Augie was happy too. It rained from the time we left, almost until we got home again. We left on Sunday and arrived on Monday. Sunday night was the first time we got to really enjoy boondocking at Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, like Walmart and dozens of other places, all have camping. Out back. On this night, we were the only ones camping at Hotel Cracker Barrel. And it was nice again, getting to sleep in our own bed. I think my wife was worried the whole night that someone may come and try to break into our airstream, but I told her, don't worry, and we listened to the rain as we fell asleep. Being in the rain in an airstream is a wonderful place to be. You feel like you're on the porch of some old farmhouse with a tin roof above. 
The way the Airstream windows work, they lift up and out so that even when it's raining hard, you can have the windows open and get air in there. I think the most wonderful thing about the Airstream is whether you're doing anything or not, it's just nice to be in. I don't think that's unusual for anyone that owns any type of RV, quite frankly. But the Airstream has so much light coming in, it just feels wonderfully lit and open. We didn't have any agenda, and I think if you can take a trip without an agenda, that's the best kind of trip to take. There's nothing worse than trying to force something to happen and being forced on to some kind of absolute schedule. To me, that kind of defeats the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing. When traveling, I don't want to drive the adventure into a specific direction. I'd rather have the adventure be revealed to me. Like a sunrise breaking over the horizon, you just need to be quiet sometimes and let what's supposed to happen, happen. When we were up in Traverse City, we went out on that peninsula that goes up to a lighthouse that I can never remember the name of, and it was just a beautiful drive through rolling hills and many, many vineyards. The landscape just gets revealed to you, and in the process of that revelation, it etches that memory into your heart. We didn't have an agenda. We just had the hope that something would be etched into our heart, no matter how small, for the rest of our lives. That's why we have adventure. But true adventure is letting the adventure reveal itself. Your job, and the most important thing, is that you open yourself up and set the table for that revelation to appear. For instance, if I was going to take a trip to Oregon, British Columbia, or Niagara Falls, I probably wouldn't plan much more than that. If you try and push it, and drive it to where you think it should be, to where you have some preconceived idea of where it needs to go, it will never probably get there. The journey will never have the fluidity to allow the very best things to happen. The preconception may force you to drive right by the very thing that was just about to reveal itself. When we went to my mother's, I didn't have any plan. It had just been a really long time since I got to see her. That was the basis for the adventure, and I'm sure that it was probably one of the longest times we'd ever been apart. I think the longest time I ever went without seeing her may have been two years, but certainly no more than that. And that was when I was in the military. It was my mother's birthday, so I really wanted to be there. She turned 82, but you would never know she's 82. And I don't think it's so much about the way she looks, but it has a lot to do with the way she acts. She has great mobility. She's got a great mind. She's got a great sense of humor. And yes, I kind of get lost in the moment being with her. One thing I wanted to teach her was how to shoot a pistol. Since my dad passed away about five years ago, she's been uncomfortable at home alone, sometimes, and I don't blame her. I think when a woman loses her husband or a man loses his wife, I think initially their souls get cast out into a lake of loneliness for a while. Although it can be a very rapid journey to the center of this lake of loneliness, it can take years, if ever, to get back to shore again. I think peace can be elusive so I could help her have some. It was a special gift I wanted to give her. We were at the tail end of fall colors and had the sunlight actually been showing, it would have been a very beautiful drive out there. But we appreciate it nonetheless. As you get off the exit to head to my mother's home, the exit is on top of a very high and long descending hill, and you will see Lake Erie. 